Atlanta. So <laughs> this one is on James Joyce's Ulysses. And what I want to talk to you about is how to read difficult books. Some books are inherently difficult, and James Joyce's Ulysses is absolutely one of those books. Uh, I had attempted to read it twice before, but I could get only a couple chapters or episodes or whatever you want to call it into the book. Um, some of it was, you know, very interesting, and I did know a little bit, but the problem with Ulysses, it's not that you have to know uh, Homer's Odyssey, which I do know pretty well. Uh, there are, par are par parallels with Homer's Odyssey deliberately, but I don't think that's necessarily the strength of the novel. The problem is there are so many references to current events, Irish history, uh, just political items, and to a certain extent, Joyce probably assumed that his readers knew some of it, but also I think he knew it was going to be difficult. I would say it's the pinnacle of modernism, as it were, and it's at the end of what I would call a great chain of reading. Uh, some of the some of the things that surprised me um, and how I actually got through it was an audiobook version of Ulysses. But even before that, I went to um, a lecture series on Ulysses from the Great Courses or uh, the Teaching Company. And it, he doesn't, the lecturer in that course, and I'll link it to, to it in the notes, he does not, you know, get into necessarily deep into the symbolism. He does talk about parallels between the Odyssey and the book, but he helps you interpret uh, the material. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Actually, so when I was a teenager, the first time I actually got the cliff notes for a book, was for a book I was not assigned to read. It was Catch-22. I tried reading it through, and there's some stuff that was funny that I could get, but the chronology of the book is so confusing. And I know some people make a map based on the number of missions they need to have flown, you know, to transfer or get out, whatever. And that's kind of how you keep up with the chronology and also a my little minder binders deals that he's got going on. But it was just very confusing. So I got the cliff notes so I could figure out what the heck was going on. And why not do that? There are so many guides, interpretations, actually one of my favorite ones and is Thug Notes. And again, I'll, I'll link to the YouTube channel or playlist. And because of Thug Notes, is why I got Dostoevsky. I'm like, you know, for the longest time, a lot of these classic novels, Moby Dick is another one, and War and Peace, well, War and Peace is another thing. In any case, I was encouraged to look into certain books because of Thug Notes. Yes, it's a performance uh, by someone who's acting a character. It's not real, but who cares? It doesn't matter if it's real, you're getting information and it's helping you enjoy the book because why are you reading this? You're going to, you hope to learn something from it, but the whole point, again, to me, it's entertainment. Reading is my entertainment and getting it through an audio book. And so this is what I want to get to with Ulysses. So I first, I did the lecture series. When I got to the end of them, like, okay, yeah, I'm going to try the book again, but this time, I'm going to do an audiobook, and I will attempt to actually read text in a, in another time. I do have a copy of the book. Uh, you know, it's easy to pick up cheap or free copies at library fairs. A lot of people have them on their shelves and never read it. But the audiobook, um, and I'll have to link to the particular version. It's from um, an Irish actor who also he's done a whole bunch of James Joyce audiobooks and it's fabulous 
you would not realize how many different Irish accents there are based on class, education, and that sort of thing. You really get the flavor for what it sounds like. And so much of Joyce's wordplay doesn't work on the page as well as it does in the ear. Now, maybe he's writing. It, he's Irish, so this is all alive to him for choice. But as an American, and yeah, maybe my forebears were Irish, woo, uh, the Murphys and probably others, uh, you know, we've not been back to the old country except as tourists. Uh, you know, it's been over 100 years at least, probably over 150 and maybe even longer. We're just Americans. We're just mutts now. In any case... It was a lot of fun, the audiobook. But even so, I did need the preparation. So difficult books, they're worth it. That said, there's no point in going into some of these books that are pretty dense in ideas, imagery, and a lot of connections between assuming that you have uh, read other things. The, the one item that popped out of out to me in the audiobook that wasn't highlighted in the lectures were the snippets from Don Giovanni. The thing is, it's from two parts, one of which is my favorite part in the opera. So the moment and uh, the reader sings it is Don Giovanni, Archen Arteco. And this is when the commendatory, the statue um, of the guy Don Giovanni <laughs> murdered comes into uh, the Don's dining room and says, Don Giovanni, um, it's you've invited me to your dinner and I've arrived. Um, and then he makes a deal that the Don shouldn't refuse, but he does and he gets dragged to hell. Um, any Don Giovanni performance that I, I get a recording of, I go straight to that track to see how they do it before I decide to watch the rest of the opera. Because if they screw that up, it, it's, it's the key part of the opera. Actually, many productions of the opera cuts it off right after the Don gets dragged to hell. Uh, there is some stuff that comes after, and I do kind of like having the, I guess it's a sextet, but I'm not, I forget how many people are involved, various couples in Leporello saying i got to go get myself a better master next time. It's, it kind of wraps it up for all the characters. <laughs> but if all you really care about is Don Giovanni, the character of the Don, uh, stopping it right after he gets dragged to hell, that's fine. But if you screw up the part where he gets dragged to hell, no. Okay, so anyway, that was a discursion. Getting back to Ulysses, there is the wordplay that you can, especially, obviously, the... Um, Plosives, the alliteration, various kind of poetical aspects of the text come through in the audiobook very well. And given the performer of this, and it, and you do need to have a good performer for this. And they also have a woman who does uh, Molly Bloom's lines, which is very interesting and it's very nice, nicely done. Um, it really helps you connect to the text. I highly recommend it. Uh, I really enjoyed Ulysses. Um, now that I finally was able to get through it, I understand why so many people are fans of it and why it continues to live. And that's really the whole point of great literature. The ones that really don't connect to people today um, for a variety of reasons, you know, it's for the academics. Don't read it then. It's fine. But something like Ulysses, I think, will continue. It does, it does need preparation, but once you have that preparation, there's a lot that's enjoyable. Uh, my favorite part of Ulysses, I just want to say what it is, it's when um, Leo Bloom is in the pub, and I think he's looking for uh, one of the guys to talk over the life insurance policy. So obviously, a life insurance plot element really made me perk up. But it wasn't about that. It's the citizen. It was a very anti-Semitic, very pro-Fenian, so pro-separate from England or the UK guy, who's very insulting. And the end of the whole uh, episode has Leo Bloom. I, I, I don't know if he's on a trolley or whatever. He's getting a tin thrown at him by uh, the citizen and his 
dog is going, you know, ah, you're going to attack him, but he gets away. Um, and saying your God was a Jew, saying Jesus uh, was a Jew, of course. Um, so obviously that's one of the threads. Leopold Bloom comes from a Jewish family. He converted, I don't know, to Protestantism, then Catholicism, or the other way, I can't remember, um, or, or his father did. Again, I'll go back. Uh, some of the details you will miss in an audiobook because there's some certain stylistic things that Joyce tries. But even so, some of the stuff is really about the Irish gift of the gab and uh, Irish use of the English language. And I can't think of anything more Irish than that. this book, Ulysses. Uh, it's It's amazing. I will go back to it. It's going to be in my list of top classics I recommend to anybody. But this is the one that you really have to be prepared for. The other ones, uh, the Dickens books, Dostoevsky, you don't need as much prep for to understand what's going on. Um, so that's it. Enjoy Ireland.